All right, buddy, welcome back to Ox Talks. Uh, it is Tuesday, January 30th, 2024. Hope you're having a great and productive day today. I can't believe we're almost in uh, February of this new year. And while things are moving extremely fast uh, with this economy, thank you for uh, watching the shows. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. If you find uh, the content helpful and useful for you, uh, please hit the uh, thumbs up notification and the bell notification uh, so we can continue to spread the word. Share the videos, please, with your family and friends uh, and those that you care about so we can hopefully uh, keep maybe just a few other people ahead of the curve as to what is happening so they can take uh, preventative measures uh, to insulate themselves from this ongoing downturn. I um, before I get into the, the meat and potatoes of the show today, I want to address, you know, I, I'm getting, we must, we must be doing something right here on the channel because I'm getting more uh, haters and more critical comments. Obviously, I can't be all things to all people. I do my best to give a well-rounded presentation in 15 minutes every day, share some news, share some insight as a business owner, as an attorney. Uh, share some insight on health and fitness and diet, uh, which I think are all things that we all, that we all should be paying attention to. So I don't have a time. Uh, I work here, you know, full time as an attorney, running a law practice, responding to hundreds of emails and calls uh, on an ongoing basis. I don't have time, uh, unfortunately, to deep dive into some of these subjects. So I do the best I can to summarize it. Everyone should you know, do their own research. Uh, you know, listen to some of these things I'm talking about. Yes, I share uh, positions and opinions of analysts. Are they all right? No, are many of them wrong? Absolutely, but the, the point is to generate some, some thought-provoking uh, messages and content for you. Some of it's obviously data-based and statistics, and some of it is, is more um, pundits and analysts. Uh, so you have to just, you know, pull what you can or what, what works for you from the videos. And that's, I'm going to continue on uh, with this style. I will tell you this, I'm very thick skinned. Uh, there's not much that can be said that offends me after 30 years of being a litigator. Try a litigating cases, try going up against veteran trial lawyers in, in trial and depositions and getting your ass handed to you. Uh, and getting chewed out by judges, and you know, it. it, it uh, I'll tell you, you know, get into the uh, blood sport of litigation, and uh, you develop some thick skin very quickly. So, uh, if it, if the channel's not for you, you know, don't don't break it down. Go somewhere else. We have a nice community here, and uh, I'm sure you'll find some other content somewhere else that uh, you can draw from. That uh, draw from that will help you. These are only to the people, obviously, that. Uh, feel that they can use it as a platform to be negative. Okay, let's talk about the stories I saw today I thought were very, very uh, important. The first one, interestingly enough, is from the Daily Mail, which is a London-based publication. Now, I find it interesting that the, this London-based publication is talking about American or U.S. bank closures uh, this week and, and recent uh, announcements of bank closures, which I'm not seeing on any of our mainstream sources or any of our really of our alternative sources either. So jumping in, says Bank of America, Chase, Capital One, U.S. Bank, and PNC are among 10 national banks to shutter 41 locations in a single week. And it says, is your bank affected? Uh, it says, over the course of just one week, American banks said they would close 41 branches around the country. PNC said in a filing to its regulator, it would close 10 branches across, uh, across six states, including Georgia, Maryland, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Wisconsin. Meanwhile, in the week starting January 15th, U.S. Uh, Bank said it would shut nine branches. Uh, and Bank of America said it would shut, be shutting eight branches. First National Bank of Pennsylvania and Huntington each notified the office of the comptroller of the currency that it would close, each close four. Capital One, which also said it would shut four branches the week prior, notified the regulator of another two closures, both in Virginia. And a handful of other banks said they would close branches fifth, third, Chase, Key Bank, and Wood Forest also announced closures of that week. So look, do we have, we know there's a consolidation 
of the, the not only consolidation of the banks, number of banks, but also of the number of branches. And you'll get a whole host of explanations for why this is happening. But what we have to pay attention to is, uh, is that there is immense amount of pressure, which is going to be continuing to fall upon, especially these regional banks uh, throughout this year and the next coming, coming years, as we see the wave of commercial uh, real estate defaults and loan defaults, apartment loan defaults, uh, office um, space loan defaults uh, come in waves and affect these banks. Uh, the regionals being most susceptible to these defaults and non-performing loans. So, what is the moral of the story? You know, if, if you're if you're if you're all at a regional bank, you might want to consider spreading your uh, your funds and your monies up uh, between a regional bank and maybe a couple larger banks. Uh, you know, I personally do like regional bank banking. I use one in my local area, but I also have accounts with with a larger bank. So, you know, do, do just spread. Uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket, so to speak, and do some research. Don't assume that just because you're under two hundred fifty thousand dollars in any given account uh, that you're going to be protected through the FDIC if the bank should fail or there be a bail in or or, or a bank closure. Uh, there is a lot of information out there that you can read and watch that uh, clearly shows that the FDIC program is severely underfunded, undercapitalized, and it's it's extremely likely that you will not see that two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars if the banks start failing. And I think there's going to be, from my perspective, another uh, another kick up of these of these bank failures as we proceed through 2024. Next article I'll talk about today, and it deals with UPS. I'm sure a lot of you will see this news today, and you'll hear about it on mainstream media uh, and also alternative sources. Uh, but it talks about UPS to cut 12,000 positions, uh, which is actually 14% of its workforce. It says, five months after unionized UPS workers ratified a massive five-year labor deal that included massive pay bumps, the logistics company announced on Tuesday morning that 12,000 jobs or 14% of its $85,000 management jobs would be cut. I spoke with a longtime buddy of mine today. We go back to college days together, and he's been a longtime UPS driver. Uh, been pretty successful. He's going on, I think, 18 or 19 years now. So he's in a senior position. I spoke with him today after I saw this news, number one, to confirm that he was not going to be affected. And, and he indicated, no, he was not going to be. Uh, the way the unions work, evidently, is they cut positions in, in order for, uh, of seniority from the bottom up. Uh, he's been there long enough in a senior position. So his job is not at risk. Uh, but we have uh, 12,000 jobs that are, are absolutely at risk. Uh, we were, I, I was uh, asking him if, if he thought some of this stemmed from the fact that the union pushed through such massive uh, pay increases for the drivers uh, you know, a few months ago. And he said that's definitely part of it. But he said, interestingly enough, a lot of the drivers, especially the new drivers, thought you know, that that was going to actually be what they would be receiving in their paychecks. And he said it was kind of a bit of a sales gimmick to get or sales pitch to get drivers in because he said that included, and it wasn't really announced clearly in the news, that included uh, the health care benefits and also pension. So he says that's not what these guys are taking home. Uh, and, and of course, then you have also have taxes taken out. So he said there was a lot of uh, dissension among you know new workers that once they realized their paychecks weren't really going to be that big that uh, that they that they quit. Anyway, if you are um, a if you are a one of these twelve thousand people of UPS, uh, I hope that you have had you know six months of reserves set aside uh, to cover your bills and your mortgage payment and your insurance payments and to put food on the table for your family. Uh, likewise, if you're one of the tens of thousands of other employees that have lost their jobs already uh, this year and late last year, I hope that you uh, prepared and didn't spend every dime you make and didn't run up your credit cards because now you can find yourself in a very, very, very severe situation depending on what your backup plan is. So again, I'll come back to the point that it makes some sense to consider finding a way to generate a separate source of income, separate from and above and beyond the money you make from an employer 
or from your nine to five job if you have a boss. Because these things are happening now in droves. I know it's, we talk about this almost every day. And I think we're going we're gonna to keep seeing more layoffs uh, throughout this year. So start your own business, folks, if you can. Start your own side hustle. Get some skin in the game and try to um, create, make, make, create, make yourself as self-sufficient excuse me, if, if, as you possibly can uh, during these, uh, these shuffling times. All right? So that's UPS. The next article I want to address, again, we go back to the consumer debt in this country. And we talked about it a lot during the holidays and even thereafter as all this data was coming in about coming in about how much consumers use their credit cards, how much they were putting on the buy now, pay later plans. So this one came out of Newsweek yesterday, late yesterday. It says Americans rack up $19 billion in credit card debt in one month. It says Americans have amassed $19 billion in credit card debt in a single month, marking an even greater turn toward reliance on borrowing. With a population of 340 million, the figure translates to about $56 per person. It says that surge, primarily in revolving credit, came as retail sales data handedly exceeded expectation, according to the Wells Fargo's weekly economic and financial commentary. U.S. households may have propped up retail sales using revolving credit, signaling potential financial strain for many. It says households may have propped up retail sales. It's, there's no may about it. That's exactly what happened. Consumers were out during the holidays, out, starting right after Thanksgiving, swiping the credit cards and putting themselves into more tenuous financial position. It says total consumer credit crossed the $5 trillion mark for the first time in November. November's consumer credit report showed an increase in total consumer credit exceeding $5 trillion for the first time, according to Wells Fargo. The surge was largely driven by an increase in revolving credit, mainly credit cards, which accounted for $19.1 billion of this rise. Consumer credit card balances are at their highest level ever, as consumers have used their available credit to deal with higher than expected costs for goods and services. Um, and that's according to Michelle Rannery, VP of U.S. Research and Consulting at TransUnion. So, um, this is not going in the right direction. And if you're one of those people that abuse the credit cards or have been abusing the credit cards, again, uh, people keep asking for solutions. Uh, if you're using your credit cards to put food on the table for your family, uh, you've got bigger problems, I, I, I take it, than worrying about your credit card lines getting maxed. But if that's not the case, and your discretionary spending is, uh, is basically irresponsible, and you're running up credit cards and you're taking out credit lines and you're doing buy now, pay laters and paying minimum payments on things, that is eventually going to catch up and uh, it's, it's going to end very badly, you know, potentially for you and your family. So again, not uh, preaching, just saying, look, at, we have all-time debt. We know our country has all-time debt as well. This is not going to end well, folks, regardless of all the, all the people out there saying that don't worry about the debt. Uh, you know, live for today, but there may not be any tomorrow. Uh, you know, I sure hope those people that are losing their jobs right now thought about tomorrow. I bet that they wish they did too. So with that being said, I'll leave it there. I'm going a little bit long today. Uh, I, some, of the, some of the comments I've received, overwhelmingly they're positive, and I thank you for that. A lot of them saying, you know, you don't offer any solutions. You're just a fear monger. Boy, I think that every day on this channel, I, I do offer solutions. If you're listening, uh, number one, start your own business, become your own boss, uh, become your own bank, consider stacking some alternative assets, some gold and silver, uh, get yourself out of debt, stop being irresponsible with spending, uh, stop, pay down the debt you have and stop taking out new debt, work on your credit score, don't be a loser and pay your bills late, get your bills paid on time, uh, and of course, you know, don't be, you know, don't be lazy, get off the couch, put down the potato chips and the unhealthy food, get to the gym, get a workout in, be in the gym every day if you can. Uh, it is well spent time uh, and you will be uh, stronger and healthier, both physically and mentally for doing it. So these are solutions that I talk about basically every day overlapping on this show. I'll continue to harp on those. 
I'm going to stay with the style of this show uh, because it's the best I can do within uh, the constraints I have because of time at the law practice. I have a family I, you know, that I spend time with, obviously, as much as I possibly can. I have elderly parents out here locally I have to help take care of. So a lot of things pulling on the time. Hope you all understand that. And again, I appreciate you being here. With that being said, I'll be getting my workout again. I'm at about an hour I'm leaving to do an hour workout. Uh, I hope you guys are all going to do the same today. Get your steps in, hydrate, and watch that diet. Calories in, calories out. Appreciate every one of you. Bye. See you tomorrow.